World leaders have condemned the murders of three teenagers discovered in a shallow grave Monday in the West Bank. And in an apparent act of revenge, a Palestinian teenager was kidnapped and killed on Wednesday, triggering clashes in East Jerusalem. 19-year-old Eyal Yifra, 16-year-old Gilad Shah, and 16-year-old Naftali Frankel, who had dual Israeli-American citizenship, disappeared more than two weeks ago while hitchhiking home from religious schools. Israeli investigators say the teens were shot and killed within a few minutes of getting into a stolen car that was later found abandoned and burned. Investigators believe the abductors had planned to trade the boys' bodies for Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails. Thousands gathered Tuesday to remember the teenagers. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu delivered the eulogy at the funeral and spoke about the nation's loss. I'm Kuloit Palil. This day has spontaneously become a national day of mourning. The whole nation prayed for the boys to come home, and the whole nation saw the nobility of spirit. The Israeli cabinet is working on a formal response to the teenagers' deaths, but already there have been airstrikes on the Gaza Strip. The Palestinian leadership also met Tuesday night to discuss the implications of the recent events. President Mahmoud Abbas has strongly condemned the kidnappings, we're now joined by CCTV's Roy Ruttenberg, who's following the latest developments, and he joins us from Tel Aviv. Roy, tensions are rising even further. We've had the three teenagers killed. We now have a Palestinian teenager killed. Protests on the streets. What's the latest? Indeed, and protests not just in East Jerusalem, but also in Jenin, uh, in the heart of the West Bank. We should remember that these uh, areas are s controlled uh, differently. Uh, East Jerusalem uh, was annexed, uh, whether recognized internationally or not, but by Israel. So it's controlled uh, by Israeli authorities. And there were clashes there between uh, Israeli police and East Jerusalem teens. Uh, many East Jerusalem residents have either Israeli passports or even ID cards. They are within what many in Israel would consider Israel proper, and therefore uh, rage within that community could easily spill uh, into uh, the rest of Israel with uh, very little obstacles. Now, in Janine, that is in the West Bank, that is heavily controlled behind, of course, that separation wall there, and there they clashed with troops. Now, uh, rage, if you will, uh, anger in two different places creates a problem for the Israelis, but it really shows that this uh, sentiment is spreading, and in fact, those East Jerusalem uh, uh, protesters in front of the home of the Palestinian team that were killed, uh, throwing rocks at some of the Israeli police who were responding with uh, tear gas and with uh, so-called sponge bullets and rubber bullets. Uh, really, uh, really a tense situation there in East Jerusalem, which appears to be continuing uh, after several hours. Right, and developments are moving very quickly, as you point out. What do we know about the investigations into these four deaths, three on the Israeli side, one on the Palestinian side? Well, Israelis are, uh, the Israeli officials are looking for the uh, people that they believe are responsible for the abduction and killings of those three teens. Uh, they have they'd identified two men that they believe are Hamas operatives, but what we've heard from the Israeli uh, government all the way at the top from Prime Minister Netanyahu, not just now, but even before the bodies were found, uh, is that they hold not just the operatives responsible, but Hamas as an organization, both in the West Bank, its institutions there, and in Gaza. Now, uh, in the last 24 hours, Israeli officials uh, released the emergency call to emergency responders made by one of the teens uh, as he was abducted, in which he says, I've been abducted. And then you hear uh, some words in Hebrew and then some words in Arabic and what appears to be uh, gunshots fired and then sounds of pain. That, of course, uh, was received uh, quite dramatically by the Israeli public and has put more pressure pressure on the Israeli government to respond. We've also heard calls from Israeli officials and Palestinian officials, of course, to launch a full investigation into the body of the uh, Palestinian team that was found on Wednesday morning. It's unclear whether the results of the investigation will be enough to satisfy Palestinians who appear to be convinced that it was done in response to uh, the abduction and killing of the three teens. Right now, Israel has been hitting targets in Gaza, although Israeli officials are saying this is not in response to the kidnappings and murders. This is in response to rockets coming from Gaza. Has there been any other kind of response militarily from Israel? 
Well, they're mulling a number of different uh, responses, and what we heard from the security cabinet meeting is that the response will be threefold. Once, to go after those uh, two operatives. Two, to go after Hamas's institutions in the West Bank. And three, to strike at uh, Hamas's uh, uh, stronghold in Gaza. Uh, we had, of course, uh, 34 uh, targets hit overnight on Monday night. Relative calm on Tuesday night. It's unclear what we'll see uh, in the coming days. But undoubtedly, Netanyahu is getting pressure from people within his own government from the right-wing elements uh, to strike and to strike hard. And, of course, that would include a front in Gaza. Right. Roy, very quickly, where does this place Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian Authority president? Very tricky situation. I know we often talk about uh, the the bad things that happened, but there were some things that should be noticed uh, when, uh, uh, in fact, the Palestinian president urged Netanyahu uh, to condemn uh, the killing of the Palestinian teen. Netanyahu did that today. It's unclear if he did it because Abbas, Abbas asked him to or if he was going to anyway, but it should be noted that Abbas took a, a step uh, speaking to foreign ministers, Arab and Muslim foreign ministers in Saudi Arabia, where he uh, where he basically uh, uh, criticized uh, the abductors of these Israeli teens and said that they should be released, referring to them as human beings. Uh, that took many people by surprise. Abbas is in a difficult situation. He not only represents, of course, the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank, but also the PLO, the body that represents Palestinians around the world. He's in a tricky spot, and of course, he has no army uh, to respond. Now, he also has to deal with Hamas, and we've heard Hamas officials call for assistance already from Turkey. That would, of course, expand this to a much bigger regional conflict. So he's in a bit of a tricky situation. It's really a matter of uh, what he can do is also dependent on what Israel needs from him. Okay, Roy, thanks. That's CCTV's Roy Ruttenberg talking to us from Tel Aviv.